I've been having a, a back and forth uh, with a theist friend of mine uh, about whether religion causes people to be evil. Uh, and for some time, I was less nuanced about this, and I was going by... Uh, I forget who originally said it, but Christopher, Christopher Hitchens uh, reiterated, uh, uh, it takes religion to make a good man do an evil deed. And I, and I kind of still follow that. Uh, but not as strictly. Uh, my friend was has recently posted a, an article saying atheists killed way more people than theists, religious wars, ever did. Uh, Pol Pot, Hitler. Well, I'm going to let go for this argument because to me it, it almost doesn't matter. But Hitler was not an atheist. Um, so, by the numbers, and I, I read several articles and, and saw the timelines for when the massacres were occurring. Uh, you get the Inquisition versus Hitler killing all the Jews. Uh, the big difference there is when religion was more in control technology did not exist yet, which I also think is, is kind of telling. Uh, the Dark Ages were called the Dark Ages because of the loss of technology, because we didn't move forward in knowledge. That was the whole Dark Ages. So when religion was in power, no knowledge or very little knowledge was gained or even allowed to be questioned. So the difference was when theists were doing their wanton slaughter, uh, they were using swords and bows and arrows and spears and riding horses. When atheists, when an atheist maniac was in power, uh, technology had moved forward. There were millions and millions and millions of more people on the planet for at, first of all. And then second, they weren't using bows and arrows. They were using, using machine guns and tanks and planes and bombs. So genocide was much more effective. Uh, you could kill a lot more people uh, a lot more quickly because technology had moved us forward in, in killing people. Yay, technology. So the uh, idea that because atheists killed more people, which I also question, but even it's true, atheists, uh, if atheists killed more people when they were in power, it was not because atheists are more evil, because uh, that's demonstrably not true. Uh, I'll hear the argument that it doesn't matter whether you're a theist or atheist, uh, evil people do evil deeds and good people do good deeds. But again, this is where we get that saying, it takes religion to make a good people do an evil deed. And here's my example of this. Um, homosexuality. If you have a group of people that don't have a set religion. You have a bunch of deists. Uh, they believe in a higher power. They believe there's spirits in the woods. They believe, you know, all the, all the undocumented God's rules. Uh, there's fairies, so stay away from oak trees and, and mushroom rings and, and, and all that stuff. Uh, when someone presents themselves as homosexual and another individual feels icky about it for whatever reason, that's what they get to do. They just get to feel icky about it and kind of grumble and they don't like it and they avoid it and they, they're separate from it. Uh, they may find some other people that don't like it too. Okay. The difference with religion, organized religion and uh, uh, religions with a doctrine is you have then a book of rules 
given to you by the all-powerful, all-knowing creator. So you're able to hold up a rule book, point at it, and said, say, look, this is evil, and it says right here, you shall be stoned to death. So those same people that would just normally feel icky about it and avoid it are now motivated and empowered to cause suffering because of it. Uh, you can also uh, look into human laws. Uh, and I'm waiting for my granddaughter, so this is I'm, I'm not able to reference anything. Uh, so if you look into human laws, the prohibition is is a good example that I, uh, I'm well associated with. You have some people that don't like marijuana, for instance. There's never been that in history up until Prohibition, but let's let's say uh, marijuana in the past had people that didn't like it. They thought it was icky, made people do crazy stuff because they didn't understand it. Uh, before there was Prohibition, before there was a law on the books, they would just look at those people and go, oh, mm, and they would avoid it. And they would, if they didn't like it, they would stay away from it. But as soon as you put a law in writing on the books and say the leaders, the rulers of your culture say this is bad and you punish it with this or you punish it, uh, whatever the, the rule is that you punish it, at that point you see persecution. As soon as an all-powerful entity or a powerful ruling body puts something into law, writes it down, indoctrinates it, that's when you get the really crappy things that people do to each other. Because then they, they, they have something they can point at and say, look, I'm supposed to do terrible, shitty things to you because the book says so. So that's where, to me, religion is the worst. Going back to religion. It's not that religion makes people evil. An evil person or a crazy person, a violent person is going to be violent whether they're a believer or an atheist or a non-believer or agnostic or whatever else they are. They're going to be that way because that's just who they are. But if you take two equally good people, one is an atheist and one is a fundamentalist Christian, say that's how they were brought up, I'm using an extreme example, the atheist will look at stuff in the world and go, oh, well, well, I don't like that, so I'm going to avoid that. I like that, so I'll do that. And then I'll try and pass human laws in legislature to mitigate people messing with me and on and on. But when you have the same good person, generally, that is raised by a fundamentalist family that, and, and is indoctrinated into that, they will have the book. And when they run into a situation where they're uncomfortable and they refer to this book, that's where they're going to get their guidance. Regardless of how they feel inside, you're going to have some, they wouldn't be fundamentalists, but you, if you have a weaker Christian, for example, and homosexuality, they go, I'm, I don't want to hurt anybody. I know the book says that, and I'm going to feel uncomfortable and suffer in my own thing by not punishing this person because they're good enough to overcome the doctrine. See, that's where theism is. You have to be good enough to overcome it. Uh, but someone that is following it and they believe this is the word and they say it, the book says there's rules and uh, laws according to the creator that knows everything, that you must do this, uh, you must punish them, you must stone them to death, w whatever the punishment is, you have to then eke out that punish punishment. And that's... Uh, Another example you can see of, of the suffering and the conflict is gay fundamentalist Christians. Uh, I don't think it's any secret that you have a gay fundamentalist Christian. They tend to be the most violent uh, and the most horrific towards other gay people. And it's because they hate themselves. Their ruler, their creator, has told them they are evil and flawed, and they're going to do everything they can because they understand on a personal level what being gay is. And so when they see somebody else that is gay, 
not following, not doing what they're doing, not sacrificing themselves into the altar of abstinence and, and, and loneliness, when they see somebody else wantonly uh, engaging in those activities and uh, uh, what seems like debauchery and, and callousness and just evil, they will eke out the punishment with a vengeance because they're not allowed to do it. They, they can, that's where the conflict is. So no, I don't think religion makes one evil, but I, I still have to agree that in many cases, uh, it takes doctrine to make a good man do an evil act. And, uh, and that's a distinction and it's about time to pick up the granddaughter. So, Peace.